this pattern is a variation of granulomatous called palisaded necrobiotic granulomatous pattern. And there's a, a handful of diseases in here. This is one of them. This case has these palisades or kind of wall of, of um, uh, histiocytes around a central zone that's not really necrosis like in, in a mycobacterial infection, like, not like that kind of necrosis, not, uh, but it's actually degeneration of collagen, often with some bluish myxoid um, or mucin change in the middle. So when we see this, this is a classic example of granuloma annulare. Um, which is a kind of a derm disease, but that you might encounter in regular surge path because occasionally these can occur down in the subcutis, particularly like on the legs of kids. And then they look like a mass clinically and they'll get sampled to make sure they're not, you know, some sort of soft tissue tumor. So it's important to recognize this, this very distinct pattern. Um, and usually in my experience, if it looks like this, it's very rare for it to be an infectious process. Although I've seen rare, rare exceptions. Um, so there's a list of things that can have that palisaded necrobiotic pattern. Uh, here's a closer look. These are classically blue from the mucin or myxoid material, so they're called blue granulomas sometimes. Um, this is an example of elastic fibers getting eaten by giant cells, so elastophagocytosis. Sometimes you see this in granuloma annulare that occurs in sun-damaged skin. Um, some people give it fancy names like actinic granuloma, but basically if you see this, it's totally normal finding. If you have sun damage and you have some granulomatous pattern, you can see this. Here's another example of how blue um, the granuloma annulare can look. Now this is a red palisaded necrobiotic granuloma because there's a bunch of fibrin in the middle. If there's a bunch of fibrin, these tend to be rheumatoid nodule. So rheumatoid nodule though and granuloma annulare can closely mimic one another sometimes. And if I have any doubt, I just call it palisaded necrobiotic granuloma and say the differential includes rheumatoid nodule and <clears throat> granuloma annulare. And then clinically, they can check, does the patient have rheumatoid arthritis or, or, um, or is this you know, a kid and it's a solitary lesion and then it's probably not a rheumatoid nodule. But t these classically are going to be red, but it doesn't always work that way. I've seen exceptions both ways. I've seen GA that had some fibrin in the middle. I've seen rheumatoid nodule that had some myxoid blue areas in the middle. Now here's another one where you've got palisading around a necrotic or necrobiotic center, but ooh, when you look closer, that looks pretty nasty. So this is really important to never forget. It's rare, but it's super bad if you miss it. This is epithelioid sarcoma, which can mimic GA and rheumatoid nodule, both clinically and microscopically. The key is when you go closer and look at those histiocytes, they turn out to not be histiocytes at all, but big, ugly cells, usually with kind of pale nuclear chromatin and big nucleoli, a lot of mitoses, although it's totally normal to see mitoses in rheumatoid nodule and granuloma annulare, just to point that out. Of course, if you have any suspicion for this, you can do stains like keratin or EMA and nuclear INI1 or SMARC-B1 loss is the, the hallmark of this disease, although we know now that a lot of different tumors, a growing list of tumors, uh, show INI1, SMARC-B1 uh, loss. So it's not a totally specific finding. It has to fit with the, the H&E and the clinical context. But this is a really uh, terrible form of sarcoma that you don't want to miss. Um, this is a, a, a layered kind of necrobiotic uh, pattern that you see on the lower legs, uh, sometimes in diabetic patients, called necrobiosis lipoidica. Some people say it has kind of a layered cake arrangement. And you'll see histiocytes and lymphocytes and plasma cells with the kind of more fibrotic, fibrotic and necrobiotic looking um, areas. And sometimes if you see uh, that pattern like NLD, but with cholesterol clefts and giant cells, you can think of necrobotic xanthogranuloma, which is pretty rare, but it's important to recognize because it's often associated with a paraprotein and um, a systemic um, uh, hematolymphoid neoplasms.